when you come in, you're doing a first conquest. And the first conquest means that it gets 10 sorcerers. First conquest is when you come into the adjacent region. So you just have to pick a region and then come into that area. So we come in there, and then from then on, every other conquest you have to do has to be adjacent to a region that you already control. So from this point, he can move out and he can come into a region. Now remember, it's two to take over a region plus one for every cardboard piece that is in that region. So in this case, there are two cardboard pieces of the enemy. So I put two more there. He takes over that region. Now one of these giants will die. He will not get it back. And the other will go back to the player to redistribute at the end of the turn of the player that's attacking him. Now, he can't come into here because the dragon is protecting it. But he can continue going into other regions. One, two, three, four. And again, every time he does that, he takes over the region, kills one, and the others go back to the owner. Now, he has one piece left. You can't take over an area normally with only one piece. But what you can do is you can move into a region on a final conquest. And a final conquest means that you go in there, you don't have enough tokens to fully take it over. So in this case, he would need two plus the one for three. But he's only got one. So then you get this die. And 50% of the, the spaces on the die are completely blank. So three of them are blank. And then there's one that has one, there's one that has two, and there's one that has three. And you roll it, and depending on what you get, you add that to the strength of the final conquest. So in this case, it was a blank uh, side that rolled. So you would add zero to uh, the, the strength of what is in the final conquest. So it's still a strength of one. Zero plus one equals one. So he failed in this conquest, and so he would then redistribute it to one of his piles. But say, for instance, that he got the two that he needed. So two plus one equals a three. That's exactly what he needed. He would take over that area. Now, the one thing I didn't mention during the first player's turn is that at the end of your turn, you redistribute your forces. So you take all of your forces, except you have to leave one in every area, and then you can redistribute them however you want. So you can put two here, two here, two here, two here, and then you know three here, three here, three here, however you want to do it, as long as you leave one in every space that you control. And then again, you count one, two, three, four. That's four spaces that I control. So you get four victory points for that. Now. Uh, in this case, uh, now it goes back around to the first player, and the turn marker goes to the second turn. Now, uh, at the end of that turn, the guy gets to redistribute the forces that were, were knocked off the board. Remember, two of them died, and then two of them got knocked off and goes back to the player. So after the player that attacked him's turn, he gets to put those back on the board and shore up his defenses. Now, at any point, you can take a race into decline. When you take a race into decline, you flip over. You take all but one token in every region that you control. You flip them over. And in addition to that, you also flip over the race banner. And you would flip over the uh, special power banner. Um, but most of these do not have anything, so they just go into a pile. And if you run out of those, then you reshuffle them all and put them back in the pile. Now, when you take a race into the decline, basically, you're done with it. You can't do anything for the rest of the turn. You, you just spend your whole turn going in decline. But the next time your turn comes around, you would then get to choose a new race, enter into the game, and the people that are in decline stay in decline. And you continue making a profit from the people that are in decline. But in almost every case, their special powers go away. So, for instance, uh, the humans, their special power is they make one bonus gold for every farm area that they control. But once they go into decline, they no longer make that, that extra gold. They only make it for every area they're in, but they don't make the bonus on farmland. In the case of dwarves, they actually make a bonus coin for mountain areas that they're in, or mining areas that they're in, rather. It doesn't necessarily have to be a mountain. In this case, there's a mining swamp. Uh, I'm not sure how that works, but there is. 
Um, so, but in the case of the dwarves, when they go and decline, they continue making that bonus coin from that. Uh, and the, the race is considered on its way out and you've moved on to a better race. So the idea is that you kind of have to balance when to go out versus when to stay because you can bring in a new race, but as soon as you bring in a new race, uh, you know, you're no longer getting the special power of your old race. But in addition to that, you can only have one race in decline at a time. So if the giants are in decline and you, have, you now have the wizards and you decide to send the wizards in decline, then the giants go and you remove all the giants from the board and you're no longer making the, the money for the areas that they were in. That is essentially how you play the game. You move through the game, you're trying to get as many victory points as possible. So while you want to buy up to the more powerful races and power combinations, and in some cases you want the higher number of people, so like in the case of pillaging halflings, you would have 11 troops. Whereas in the case of like uh, merchant, uh, merchant humans, you would only have seven. So the numbers really start to matter because as you move out and as you control more territories and people are getting killed, um, you'll eventually run yourself so thin that you can no longer support the troops. You couldn't spread anymore. There is no, you have reached your potential for that race. And so then you would decide to pull out. That is the essence of what the game is about. Knowing when to go into decline, when to pull out of a race and when to keep pushing it. You go through 10 turns and then after everybody's had their 10th turn, then you count the number of victory points that you've earned through the game and then the game's over. So Small World is a game that we've gotten quite a few uh, plays in now. We've played it quite a bit with different number of players and um, I think we have pretty different opinions on, yes, on, uh, on what, what the game is like. So first let's discuss the fun factor of the game. Uh, Small World is a game that are unlike anything I've really ever played. And that's both a, a good thing and a bad thing. Um, for one thing, the combat system is a lot more simplistic in a lot of ways than other games that I've played, and a lot more predictable in other ways that I've played. And that's something that you don't really like. Yeah, uh, when I first played the game, I originally thought that it was going to be a lot of fun, but as it went on, I kind of got really bored with the combat system because it, it's really predictable, Yeah. and it just it gets boring after a while. So, I mean, that it's, it's an interesting game, and I really like the combat system. I just wish it weren't as predictable. I wish there was more to it than just what it is. Whereas uh, I, I definitely see the the complaint there that the combat system is too predictable, and it is. It is pre predictable, but to me that really puts the strategy in other aspects of the game, like where to bring in your armies and and which ter uh, territories to conquer. Not necessarily do I have enough troops? Uh, will the luck of the roll help me? That kind of thing. I think is it really puts the focus in different areas from um, what you've seen in typical games. So for me, that's not such a big complaint, but I can definitely see where you're coming from. Right. I mean, other than that, what did you think about uh, how the game plays? Uh, the game plays great. I mean, it, it's it's a completely original thing. I've never played anything like it before. So, I mean, we're like half the goal is knowing when to cut your losses and move on to a new race right. versus to continue your race. It's and I, I think even that becomes predictable after a while where you know, okay, I can't continue with this race or you know I have one more turn with this race. And it does kind of become a little predictable, but there's still times in which you could push uh, push forward and continue on. And I think our last game, uh, there was a situation like that where uh, you know I thought the guy we were playing with should have totally cut his losses earlier, but he insisted that he could get a lot more in that round, and he ended up losing. And you know, we didn't know if it was because of that or if it was because he just lost. Exactly. Well, I mean, like there there are a few instances where you'll get a race like the Flying Elves, the game I had the Flying Elves, and I just milked it until the end of the game. That worked, and yeah. that was a different strategy than you usually get. Sometimes you get that. Sometimes, I mean, there are times when you'll play it, and everyone will. Uh, we'll all decline at the exact same time. We'll go around, you know, play a couple rounds, decline, play a couple rounds, decline, until we get one of those races like the Flying Elves or the Dragon Master Skeletons, as you 
so happily used. Yeah, Dragon Master skeletons. And, you know, it just, there's so many different combinations. You gotta get used to how each of them play. And, you know, you could, that's the one thing that I think this game really has going for it is there's a lot of variety to the different race slash power combinations that you could literally play, you know, 50 to 100 games and probably not see exactly all of the them, same game twice. You know, never have the same game twice, probably. I mean, you're going to come across the same combinations, obviously, but, you know, and I think that, I think this game is ripe for an expansion because you can just keep on adding new races and new powers but I think that it really um, for me it, it's a strength I really like the the way the game plays the whole combat system doesn't really take anything away from it um, to you it damages the the fun factor just a bit but right. I, I like I'm not big I like a little bit of a uh, randomness in a game just a little bit you know I wish there was a way to say okay well you know he may or may not be able to do it yeah, I, I like that that little bit of chance there. So, um, other than that, I have.